name is Russ and I am a researcher at Warwick Manufacturing Group, which is what WMG stands for. I am an engineer who turned to research a bit later in life and I am an engineering evangelist in that if you leave me alone with you for too long, I'll try and turn you all into engineers so we can take over the world. And I like science, in particular I like materials. And I particularly like steel, which is why I work with it. And I'm going to tell you today about steel. I'm going to tell you about why it's important. I'm going to tell you about how it's shaped the world. I'm going to tell you about what we are doing to ensure that steel has a place in the future. So, if we're going to talk about how important steel is, let's talk about where we use it. How many of you today, hands up, came in a car? That's a lot of people. Did anybody come on the train? No one on the train. Who walked? Who's walked today? Come on, you've all walked today. Brilliant. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you very much. OK. Steel is in the cars we drive, right? It's in the railways. Trains don't move without steel because they, they move on steel. Steel wheels and have steel tracks. Steel's in your clothes. It's in the seats that you sat on. It's shaped the pavements that we walk on. The other materials that we're going to talk about today they need steel to shape them. Steel has shaped the world. It has driven revolutions, the industrial revolutions that go on around us. It is an incredibly important material. It's everywhere. But how many of you actually know what steel is? Who can tell me what steel is? Young gentleman there. You don't know. Okay, no, another one on. Um, iron and carbon. Iron and carbon. Good. Good answer. Okay. <coughs> Steel's an alloy. Okay, so but what is an alloy? Who can tell what an alloy is? Anybody? Yeah. Absolutely right. He said he's right. So steel's an alloy. It's a mixture of elements if you put them together. And our primary ingredients for making steel are, as we've just heard, iron and carbon. When you make steel, we have iron and carbon, and then we put some other things in it. Steel's a bit like a cake, right? Here's a cake. This is a cake. Here's one that I bought earlier. I would like to say I made it, but I really didn't. Who can tell me what the primary ingredients of making a cake are? Somebody else, though. Young man. Flour. Flour, okay. So anything else? Eggs. Eggs. Butter. But sorry? Butter. Butter, yes, exactly. So we have some primary ingredients for making them. They are the things that go into making every cake. But if you want to make a cake a different flavour, we put some other things in it. With steel, if you want to make a different steel, what we do is we put other elements in. So we might use it, we might put silicon in or we might put chromium in. And that all gives it different flavours, much like we have different flavoured cakes. And every flavour has its own personality, its own set of properties, its own way of behaving. There are more different types of, hang on a minute, steel than there are all the other materials combined. More types of this, because we have more uses, for, or many uses for this, and many different needs for different types of steel for this, as there are other materials combined. It's everywhere around us, it's clearly very important, but if we listen to the media, what do we hear? We don't hear much good news, do we? What we generally hear are horrible words like dirty, decline, dying, damaging, an industry that's reached the end of its life, which is terribly sad news. But it isn't true. What it is, is the reporting of how an industry that's been in decline has suffered a bit. Whereas actually, when you look at what steel is, it is an incredibly beautiful and elegant material, much like our cake. When we want to make steel, we use heat and some other bits and some other processes, but mostly we make heat and we melt stuff we it together. And what we do is we end up with a very, very complicated process that on a very elegant scale controls microstructurally what goes on. What that means is we can't see it when we look at it with a naked eye, but much like if we open our cake up, so that's our cake from the outside, when we open it up it looks different because we can see all the different things that are in the cake. We do the same thing with steel. Exactly the same thing with steel. It's nice that. Okay. And that gives us our different properties for the steel. But let's think about steel as something slightly differently. Let's think of it like it's a person. If we want to learn about someone, what do we do? We talk to them. Okay. And one of the great things about steel is this. What's this? 
Big magnet. Cartoon. Big magnet. One of the great things about steel is it's magnetic. Not all steels are magnetic, but most steels are magnetic. Now, if we just use a magnet, we can do some pretty cool stuff with steel, like we can pick it up, we can sort it, we can, when we can start to do things like identify the different types of steel. That's just with an ordinary magnet. Now, if we're using an electromagnet, like the one we can see on the slide behind us, we can do some really, really cool stuff. Electromagnets give us the ability to talk to steel, so we can start to learn about it. And if we can start to learn about it, we can start to teach it. And if we start to teach it, we can start to generate all sorts of new different grades and all sorts of new different ways of doing things with steel. And that's what we do here at WMG. We play with magnets for a living. Well, although I do, anyway. What we use the magnets for is to learn what's in them and to do intelligent things in terms of sorting. So we can do things for the steel industry when we can do things like improve its magnetic properties. So if we look at Anisha's talk, who went before, where we're trying to make electrify the world and give electric cars, electric trains, electric planes. If we're trying to do those things, what we need to do is improve the magnetic properties of steel. Why? Because all of your motors and all of your generators and your cars and your power stations have got a specific type of steel in there. And if we can improve them, then we're going to end up in a much better place for the world. The next generations of electrical steels will be so much more efficient that if we could just get them into service, we would be able to, without generating any more power, turn the equivalent of 12 nuclear power stations off in the UK. That's just improving steel. Okay? That's how important it, it is going to be for our future. But one of the other reasons why it's so important is this. Steel, when everyone will tell you that it's dirty and bad for the environment, has a unique advantage over a lot of other materials. Steel is 100% recyclable. 100% recyclable. Who knew that? No? One person, two people, a few of you knew it was 100% recyclable. It's not an easy thing to do to recycle steel to that level. We're very good at it. We recycle about 70% of steel uh, at the moment. There are some other advantages to recycling steel. If you want to recycle one tonne of steel, it has a 74% energy saving over making a new tonne of steel. 74%, that's a massive saving of cost, heat, CO2 emissions. And one of the big projects that we've got going on here in my group is looking at how we sort steel. So how do, because it's, when you're going to recycle it, unlike cake, which is quite hard to recycle, quite difficult, as I think we'd all agree, one of the things that we do with steel, we have to learn what we put in governs what we put out. So we have to know how to sort it. And again, we come back to the use of magnets, because magnets can tell us a little bit about what's inside the steel. So we can use it to do that. Hopefully, this, will, this goes some way to showing you that steel, this material that's all around us and we take for granted, maybe it's not something we should just take for granted anymore. Maybe it's something we should learn to love again. Thank you.